Hi, I'm Genevieve and I'm one of the arts care storytellers. The season we're in at the moment is autumn and autumn is one of my favourite times of year. It's just cold enough to be all warm and cosy by the fire and it's got Halloween. I love Halloween. I love dressing up and I love playing all sorts of games but my Halloween plans have had to change a little bit this year. I was planning on going out and doing lots of exciting things, but I've had to change my plans. I'm going to have a mostly inside Halloween this year, and I bet most of you are too. I know a story about two boys who are a bit fed up about that to start with. They've had to change their Halloween plans too. Halloween's going to be really boring this year, said Ben. Oh, you can say that again, said Sam. Halloween's going to be really boring, said Ben. Just then, Dad came. Oh, that's a shame, said Dad. I just popped in to see how my favourite twins were doing. What's the matter? Oh, we're really fed up, Dad. Halloween's going to be really boring. We can't do any of the things that we want to do. Why not, said Dad. Well, duh, the boys thought that that was a really stupid question. They had been told they had to stay inside, just till they felt better. But it was really making them fed up. They'd been looking forward to going trick-or-treating around the streets and putting on their costumes and meeting up with their friends and hiding in the dark corners and booming out and just scaring each other just a little bit. But they couldn't do any of that this year. Just because you can't go out, said Dad, doesn't mean you have to miss out. We can have a brilliant Halloween inside. Yeah, right, said the boys. That didn't sound like any fun at all, stuck inside. Well, what is it you like best about Halloween, said Dad? I like putting my costume on. I was really looking forward to being a wizard, said Sam. Well, go and put it on, said Dad. I can't, said Sam. We haven't got it. Oh, yes, we have, said Dad, opening the drawer and very brilliantly pulling out some black bin bags, some tin foil, some scissors and some glue. Come on, boys, he said. Let's make a wizard's cloak. This sounded like great fun. The boys loved doing arts and crafts. They glued and stuck and painted and snipped and sellotaped and eventually they had excellent, excellent black bin bag starry capes. What else do we need? said Dad. Oh, we really need a wand, said Ben. All right, said Dad, putting on his best boomy head of all the bit wizard voice. Well, go on your wizard quest. Every wizard knows the best wands. Find the wizard, not the wizard finding the wand. Off you go round the house, boys, and see what you can find. Well, this was brilliant. The boys loved a good hide-and-seek sort of a quest, and off they shot round the house. And it wasn't long until Ben came back, holding up a paintbrush, holding it by the bristle end, the painty brush bit, and waving the stick bit in the air, he said his best magic spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, ruff, ruff, and pointed it at Dad. Dad, knowing exactly what was going on, instantly turned himself into a frog. <laughs> and they were giggling about it until Sam came back in and he was holding what he called his Lego Wand 3000. He's been building it with all of the black and brown Lego bricks that they had. Well, the next half an hour or even more than that was great fun. The boys were making up spells and they were zapping each other and zapping Dad. And Dad turned from a frog into a bat into a toad, into a rat, and they giggled and they laughed and they made up such funny spells just using nonsense words and they had, the boys had not smiled so much in ages. Well, said Dad, what happens next? What happens next, said Ben, is that we need to make potions. Every good wizard is a good potion maker. I'm way ahead of you, 
said the chief of all the wizards. Dad was putting his funny voice back on. Go into the potion room. And he beckoned the way into the kitchen. There, in the kitchen, Dad had put out every sort of liquid that the boys could possibly think of. There was water, there was milk, there was all the different flavours of juice. There was ketchup, there was brown sauce, there was mayonnaise, there was vinegar, there was everything. There was even washing up liquid. Ooh. And an enormous cauldron-like saucepan, the biggest saucepan that they had in the house. Well, the boys spent ages mixing and concocting, shaking and drizzling, stirring and mixing, making wonderful potions. They tasted some of them too. Some of them tasted yummy. And they were the good magic spells. And some of them tasted disgusting, Ugh, especially the one with soap in it. Ugh. The boys decided they couldn't possibly throw them away. No, you mustn't ever throw them away. You don't know what magic might ping out of them. <gasps> no, you can't do that. So they labelled them. And they labelled them with big red felt tip labels, the nasty ones, just so that they knew that they were for their enemies and not to be eaten and drunk by their friends. Now, it was a good job Dad was with them, because he said in his best witchy, wizardy, booming voice, Now the most important lesson about making potions. Never, ever do it without a trained wizard right beside you. You just don't know what you could be mixing. All sorts of terrible magic might occur. And then turning back to Dad, he said, and also, you might give yourself a tummy ache if you mix the wrong things. So only ever do it with a grown-up wizard beside you. He made the boys promise. That was part of being a grown-up wizard, he said. Well, that was so much fun, but it had lasted ages and it made the boys really, really hungry. Time to make another concoction, said the chief wizard. And this time they got out marshmallows and they got out vegetables and they got out all the boys' favourite things and they chopped and stirred and they used another enormous cauldron and they made themselves a beautiful, yummy autumn stew with marshmallow kebab sticks afterwards. And they eight and eight and eight until their tummies burst and the stew was dribbling down their chins. They had such a wonderful time. They're beginning to feel pretty sleepy. <laughs> and it wasn't until then that they looked outside. They'd been so busy being wizards all day. It had begun to get dark outside. Just the perfect thing for the chief wizard's final surprise, said Dad. What's the one thing you said you wanted to do most of all? Go trick-or-treating, said Sam. Yeah, said Ben, but we can't do that, can we? We can't go outside. Who says you're going to miss out just because you can't go out, said Dad. While you were busy chopping and cooking and mixing and eating, I've been busy too. Off you go round the house. Every room has a trick in it, a challenge that you have to complete. And when you've completed the challenge, you can get your treat, your prize. Somewhere hidden in the room are sweeties and comic books and all sorts of wonderful Halloween-y tricks and treats. Well, the boys shot off like a rocket. Some of the challenges were, can you complete this jigsaw puzzle before the timer runs out? Some were things like, stand on one leg, pull your scariest face, boo your brother. They loved it. It was the best trick or treating ever. And when they finished, they got to play hide and seek in the dark as well. And the very last thing that the boys did before they stopped being best little wizards for a while, was they snuggled up with the chief wizard, one under each arm, and he gave them a big hug, and he read them a wonderful wizard story. 
and they snoozed and they dropped off to sleep. Just right before Mum opened the front door, she'd come back from work. Well, she said, how was your day? And the little wizards woke up just enough to say, you're magic. Oh. So Ben and Sam didn't have such a bad Halloween after all. Whatever your plans are for Halloween, I hope you enjoy them. Have fun. Bye-bye.